for the last 71 years, we've watched some of the greatest moments in sports history. Celtics now lead 45, and West with a long jump, Russell deflected it and keeps it. Beautiful play. Feeds off quickly to Havlicek, who's been guarded by Krebs, who is holding back. Goes up, they jump long. Kuzi throws it high in the air, and the Boston Celtics are the world champion. Oscar Robertson throws to Kareem. Seven seconds. Kareem with a big shot. setting something up with Larry Bird, who gets it low. What's a move on Byron Scott? What a move by Larry Bird. Malone is doubled. They swat at it and steal it. Here comes Chicago. 17 seconds. 17 seconds from game seven. Open championship number six. Jordan. Chicago with the lead! It's Kobe again. But what if we went all the way back and redid it? Today is the year 1961. Welcome back to another episode of NBA 2K History Resimulation here on NBA 2K22. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. If you are, hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. And uh, also, don't forget, and just for those of you who are new to the channel and to these videos, we vote on, I have you guys vote on all-star MVP and regular season MVP. So make sure you guys put in the comments below who you guys vote for all-star MVP and regular season MVP for the last video. It was a close one for the regular season MVP for 1961, 1960, 1961. Uh, but real quick, the all-star MVPs, uh, the all-star MVP for 1960 was Bob Cousy. Will Chamberlain won the all-star MVP for 1961. Won. And then Elgin Baylor won the regular season MVP for 1960. And he won it again, a back to back all star MVPs for Elgin Baylor. Uh, it was really close. Sam Jones had, I believe, two votes. Um, Kuzi, I believe, had two or no, I think Kuzi had three. And then Elgin Baylor had like five or six. So thank you guys for voting. Uh, if you guys disagree with who won MVP, you have to make sure you vote, right? If you don't vote, then you can't be upset at who wins MVP. All right. So moving on to a, another thing uh, real quick. I know that the, I, I saw someone's comment. They, they said the coin flip thing didn't start for the number one pick. The coin flip didn't start to like 66 or whatever. I know I, I'm just, you know, making, making it interesting for the video. So that's what we'll be doing uh from here until i think it's 84 85 uh whichever one was i think it was patrick ewan right was the first uh first overall pick in which the it was a lottery I, i'm pretty sure that's what the year was but uh anyways uh moving on so the pistons are coming off of an nba championship that is their third uh bob Cousy winning the regulars or the finals mvp they beat the Cincinnati Royals. And there is going to be a new team in this video. We've got the Chicago Packers, which they actually end up turning into the Washington Wizards. So a new team entering the video. Uh, pretty, pretty exciting. And then we do have the 1961 NBA draft. And I believe that's all the changes, right? We got the Chicago Packers in here. So the, here is what their logo is going to look like. Now, it's not perfect. It actually <laughs> it actually was supposed to look like an orange basketball with like like a bowl in the outline. But I, I found this logo. Uh, you guys can see in the background there. 
I, that we're gonna use this instead it's only for a year uh no one actually i looked in through the um what is it like the design chair or whatever um but no one had it so next season they're gonna be the zephyrs anyways so that's just how we're gonna do things um so yeah so the chicago packers in 61 chicago zephyrs in 62 and then they uh turn into the baltimore bullets from 63 to 73 so a lot of changes with the chicago packers and next season but the philadelphia warriors will be moving on to san francisco now here's the thing and one of you guys mentioned this and i, I did it in the very the original version of this where if a team was doing really well and they were technically supposed to move like for example the la lakers right minneapolis they won a championship and then the year after we moved them to la so do we want to Okay, so I need you guys to come below, okay? Do we want to, no matter what happens and how much success they have, for them to change their city, team name, all that stuff, uh, no matter what happens? Or, if they are playing well and they're winning, do they stay in that said city, right? So Detroit, should they have stayed in Fort Wayne? Um, should have, you know, the, the Lakers stayed in Minneapolis, right? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Um, like if the, and I guess it would go up until an expansion team would come in. So like, let's say for whatever reason, the Chicago Packers become a, a God squad this off season, they win. They would, they would then be the Chicago Packers until the Chicago Bulls come into the league and then we would move them on. Um, right. So that's kind of how it would go. Let me know in the comments what you guys think change the team names and city names no matter what or wait until they become bad and then we move them uh, if they were good and they were supposed to move so let me know in the comments below that's another thing and i believe that's it so let's go ahead and move on to the off season and the 1961 nba draft we'll look at retirements here real quick uh howie shannon does retire uh not like anything not a crazy career a good career though early on uh, with the Celtics, with the Warriors, won a couple of championships, I believe. So, uh, Howie Shannon does retire. Let's see, how many championships did he win? He won one, actually. So, there you go. Uh, a five-time All-Star, one-time first-team All-NBA, one-time second-team All-NBA, and three-time third-team All-NBA. Uh, as we get, you know, farther down to, you know, like really good players retiring and stuff, in the description down below i have a google sheets of and of the nba history that you guys can go look at once legends start to retire like once bob Cousy retires he's gonna we're gonna put all of his information in that second tab so if you go into the nba history re, re simulation sheet google sheets in the bottom left of that page you, you'll see a tab of nba history and you'll see a tab of legends in that legends we'll have a we'll have those players with all of their achievements mvps finals mvps finals appearances finals wins all-star mvps all nba teams all defensive teams all of that and then their points per game rebounds per game assists per game steals per game blocks per game so all of that information will be there and the reason why we're going to put all of that there is so that by the end of the series you guys can you know we'll all give our top 10 top 15 top 20 players of all time in this thing so it's very detailed. It'll be very cool uh, to see by the end how many players are in that Legends list and uh, all of their achievements. So uh, that would be cool. And then I'll probably do something where you can filter it. Uh, so you guys will be able to filter like, oh, who won the most finals MVPs? Oh, who won the most championships? Who won? The, uh, who had the most all, div all NBA teams? You guys will be, be able to actually look in there and filter out who, you know, uh, as far as all of that. So I think that would be really cool um and uh you know super interactive with you guys so anyways let's move on to the 1961 nba draft there are three players in this draft and let's go ahead and do our coin flip the worst team in the nba uh it was a tie the nationals and the warriors so let's go ahead and grab this coin flip here and oh by the way sound is not working my xbox sound is working see you guys can hear that but the game sound is not in any game it doesn't matter what game i i, I play 
it's just not working i played fall guys i played um mlb the show this game sound is just not working on my xbox so i don't know if it's my elgato that doesn't make sense because my xbox sound is working so i don't know if you guys know how to fix that let me know in the comments below because it's weird like game sound is just not working but like i can hear the the swoosh and you know all the, the clicking sound with the xbox menu stuff but the game sounds not working anyways coin flip uh warriors will be heads and nationals will be tails so warriors are heads and nationals tails here we go warriors heads nationals tails the San or the philadelphia warriors win the number one overall pick uh syracuse will, will go second and then the st louis hawks will have the third overall pick uh in this class and then or you know what hmm we've got the packers you know what the the packers will won't receive anyone they'll just kind of go this year and then we'll see where they stand in the next draft uh which by the way the next draft i believe it's the next one has a good amount of players so uh we'll see what happens but all right there we go let's get to the 1961 nba draft actually you know what no i changed my mind so the hawks and the packers i'm gonna coin flip because there's only three players so it's kind of hard to to put chicago in here um so i'm gonna see if they'll get the third overall pick so let's do that so the hawks will be heads packers will be tails all right hawks will be heads packers will be tails and it goes to the hawks okay so never mind so the hawks will get the third overall pick packers will just have a random team uh but free agents can go there so we'll see what happens with the number one overall pick in the 1961 NBA draft, the Philadelphia Warriors select Walt Bellamy. So Walt Bellamy headed to Philly, and uh, it's in the works. Philly, the Warriors, could be moving on to San Fran next season. We'll see what happens. The number two overall pick, the Syracuse Nationals, select Don Ogies. I believe that's how you say it. I, look, I don't know how to read. So, you know, that's just how it's going to go. Uh, the St. Louis Hawks select Ray uh, Scott with the uh, third overall pick. So there you go. There is the 1961 NBA draft. Ooh, this is a big one. Bob Cousy is an unrestricted free agent. Interesting. Will Bob Cousy leave the defending chain? I can't imagine he does, but you never know. We'll see what happens. Here in the 1961 offseason and free agency, Bob Cousy returns to the Detroit Pistons. Not a surprise there. The uh, seven-time regular season MVP, three-time finals MVP returns, and uh, it will be, I wonder how long it is? Oh, five years. So he's going to be there until he's 37 and more than likely until he retires. Sam Jones will return to New York. He was a restricted uh, free agent. Mickelson returns to the Lakers. Paul Seymour moves on from LA to uh, New York. Richie Guerin returns to the Nationals. Costello to the uh, Royals. Uh, Salisbury to, uh, we'll actually stay with the Ro Royals. Broila uh, will go to uh, San Fran, or not San Fran, uh, Philly. Uh, Johnny Kerr will head to uh, Boston. Gallatin, uh, to the Hawks. George Mikan will return to Boston. Uh, Yardley will head to Philly. Uh, Earl Lloyd will return to LA. Jack Coleman will uh, return to Philly. Did the Packers select anyone or uh, sign anyone? It does not look like they did, unfortunately. So no, the Packers did not sign anyone. So a couple of guys that I got to return to their former teams. I mean, I guess, you know what I could do? You know what? This is what I'm gonna do. I want to. I want to see the Packers interesting. So, let's do this. All the players who selected a no team, they have. They will be going to the Chicago Packers. So they're not gonna be good. It's, it's almost like a uh, a draft, right? The or the um, what is what is it called? Uh, and obviously we can't do that. The expansion draft. We can't do that because we well we can't expand the league uh right now uh because you can't make it set it at eight and add you know 22 teams so we'll use that so the no team players that sign with the no team will actually go to the chicago packers 
So that means that the Chicago Packers will have George Mikan. Interesting. Earl Lloyd. Uh, Fred Shaw's. Vern Gardner. Jack Nichols. Uh, Ron Livingston. Carl Braun. Gary Bergen. Uh, Jim Nolan. And Kent Bates. Ooh, uh, Kent Bates is a fake player. But yeah, so there you go. That's what uh, we're going to go ahead and do. So the Chicago Packers will at least be somewhat competitive, right? They, they won't be trash. Uh, they will be trash com compared to the real teams, but they'll be above the, the fake team. So that's what we'll go ahead and do. Here we are at the 1961-1962 NBA All-Star Game, and uh, the East wins it once again. They've won it every single year. Obviously, a lack of players in the West. A lack of teams that will change soon in a couple of videos where um from 66 to 70 we'll have one two three four five six seven eight teams enter the league and uh let's see one two three four five five of those teams will be in the west so it evens out so that that's cool uh that'll be in a in a few videos but here we go all-star a game for the East, Sam Jones with 20 points, 4 assists. Stokes with 16 and 4. Russell with 14, 5. 2 assists, 2 steals. Uh, Bob Cousy, 12, 3 and 3. Uh, Hal Greer, 11, 3 and 2. Elgin Baylor, 10, 6 and 10. Bob Pettit, 9, 3 and 6. For the West, Gary West, 19 points, 6 assists. Will Chamberlain, 14, 6 and 6. Mickelson with 12, 3 and 6. Ensign with 12, 7 and 5. Charmo, 10 and 2. And Coleman with 10. Uh, but the East wins it. I think I think it would go to Sam Jones here. Let me know in the comments below. Who do you guys vote for for All-Star MVP? 1961-1962 NBA season is now over. And 2K has voted Elgin Baylor as the regular season MVP. If you guys uh, vote Elgin Baylor as well, that would be three straight regular season MVPs for Elgin Baylor. He played great. 26 points per game, 15 rebounds, 7 assists, a steal, and a block uh, for the Boston Celtics. Let's look at the other players, though, who are up for uh, the MVP. By the way, Elgin Baylor did lead the league in scoring. That is the second time in three years. Uh, last season, Sam Jones led the league in uh, scoring. Jerry West averaged 24.5 points per game, 8.8 .8 assists. Sam Jones, 24 uh, six and seven. Bob Cousy, another triple double year, but his scoring has really dropped off. 23, 10, and 10. Vern Mickelson, 21, 8, and 6. Oscar, 21, 6, and 10. Oscar's getting better. Uh, Bob Pettit, 21, 17, and 6. So Bob Pettit, uh, his, his role has, has increased as Bob Cousy is starting to kind of diminish. Bob Cousy at 33. Bob Pettit is, well, at 30 now, too. Will, 21, 15, and 4. Hal Greer, 21, uh, four and six. Bob Boozer, 20, 13, and three. Uh, let's see. Any other players here? George Mikan for the Packers, 18, 10, and, and one assist. Um, Paul Arizon, 18, eight, and four. Jack Nichols for the Packers, 16, four, and three. So there you go. Those are some of the numbers. I think this one is pretty easy, though. I think this has to go to Elgin Baylor. Three straight regular season MVPs for Elgin Baylor. Uh, the Rookie of the Year, Walt Bellamy, averaged 15 and uh, 14 per game for Philly. Wayne Embry wins Sixth Man of the Year. That is his third straight Sixth Man of the Year award. Bill Russell, another Defensive Player of the Year award, 15, 18, 3.5 assists, a steal, and two and a half blocks per game. That is his sixth straight Defensive Player of the Year. Most improved, Oscar Robertson, 21 points per game, six rebounds, 10 assists. So good for Oscar. There's your award. On to the All-NBA first team. We got Bob Cousy, Oscar Robertson, Elgin Baylor, Bob Pettit, and Will Chamberlain. All-NBA second team, Sam Jones, Jerry West, Murray Stokes, Bob Boozer, and Bill Russell. All-NBA third team, we got Bill Sharman, Hal Greer, Kenny Sears, Vern Mickelson, and Willie Knowles. And then on the All-Defensive first team, we got Bob Cousy, Casey Jones, Bob Pettit, Elgin Baylor, Bill Russell. All-Defensive second team, Oscar Robertson, Hal Greer, Murray Stokes, Kenny Sears, and Wilt Chamberlain, all rookie first team, Walt Bellamy, Ray Scott, who averaged 10 and 8, and Don Kojis, who averaged 8 and 4. On to the NBA playoffs, 
and the Chicago Packers and Nationals were eliminated. So in the playoffs, you got the Royals as the number one seed in the West, Lakers at two, Philly at three in the East, New York is one, Detroit is the four seed, uh, St. Louis is the two seed, and Boston with the uh, two-time regular season MVP so far in Elgin Baylor, possibly three. Uh, they are the three seed in the East. Let's go ahead and look at the NBA standings real real quick. The New York Knicks and St. Louis Hawks actually both had 73 wins, whereas Boston were just two games behind with 71. Detroit with 64, Nationals with 62, and the Packers with 56. The Royals with 73. Uh, they had, uh, wow, three teams that were at 73 and 9. Lakers at 69, 13, and the Philadelphia Warriors at 67 and 15. So on to the playoffs here, and we'll go ahead. Oh, you know what? I forgot to check. How many games they play but we'll we'll do that for next season as long as the conference finals and the finals are seven games at this point uh we're good i think the second round is supposed to be a five at this point i don't know if it is i can't remember if i changed it but let's go ahead and simulate the boston celtics have been eliminated 3-0 by the st louis hawks uh the detroit pistons the defending champions have been eliminated and the los angeles lakers who won it uh back to back years two three years ago uh they are eliminated so on to the conference finals we have the cincinnati royals who lost 4-0 in the nba finals a year ago against the philadelphia warriors i uh, got gene shoes aslovsky bill calhoun tom henson and wilt chamberlain and for the warriors jerry west bo Sharman, Borla, connie simmons ray felix and walt bellamy the rookie of uh, the year for the East, we've got the New York Knicks, Casey Jones, Sam Jones, Paul Arizon, Rudy LaRusso, Neil Johnson, and Clyde Lovelet. And the St. Louis Hawks, Oscar Robertson, Dick Barnett, Harry Gallatin, Maurice Stokes, Bill Russell, and a rookie, Ray Scott. This is going to be interesting. Can Oscar and Bill get to the finals for the first time in... Is that Would that be team history? Yeah, the Hawks. The Hawks have never made it to the finals. Um... The, let's see, Warriors won. Let's see, so Nationals, Knicks, Celtics, Pistons, Warriors, Lakers have all won a championship. The Hawks, and I'm missing a team. Who did I not say? Royals? The Hawks and Royals are the only two teams, other than the Packers, obviously. The Hawks and Royals are the only two teams to not win a title uh, but the Hawks are the only team to not make it to an NBA Finals. Interesting, interesting. So here we go. Game number one. And the Philadelphia Warriors win game one. The St. Louis Hawks win game one over the New York Knicks. Round or game two, the Royals tie up the series and the Knicks tie up the series. One apiece. The Royals and Knicks have both won two straight and take a 2-1 series lead. Game number four, both teams take a 3-1 series lead. And the game number five, the Philadelphia Warriors have been eliminated. And the Cincinnati Royals have made it to the NBA Finals in back-to-back -back years, hoping they can win their first uh, first franchise NBA championship. And uh, the St. Louis Hawks made it a 3-2 series. And the Knicks hold on to this 3-1 lead. Here we go. Game number six. It, game number six. It is all tied up. St. Louis was down 3-1 in this series. The Knicks have blown a 3-1 lead. And on to game number seven. We'll enter the uh, Simcast here. Will we get a Royals-Hawks NBA Finals? That would mean that we would have a new NBA champion. One of the two teams would win their first ever championship. Here we go. Game number seven, Hawks and Knicks in New York. And the Hawks with an early lead. Oscar and Bill Russell trying to get to the NBA Finals for a first time into the fourth quarter, though. And the Knicks take a 63-54 a lead. Now a 75-62 lead. They're pulling away here in this one. The Knicks lead it by 12, now 13. That will do it. The New York Knicks are on to the NBA Finals for the first time since... Gosh... Uh, okay, they lost a few years ago in 1959. So the first time in since 1959, it's been, uh, what, four years? Three years, technically? Three years since the New York Knicks have been in the NBA Finals. But it's been a while since they won. They last won in 1955. So it's been seven seasons, seven years, 
since the Knicks have won one. Paul Arizon was the regular season MVP in both of those, uh, or finals MVP in both of those series. But now it's, it's a new group, obviously. He's the veteran at just an 83 overall. You got 92 overall Sam Jones, 89 overall Casey Jones, 90 overall Daniel Johnson, 86 overall Rudy LaRusso. So he's, he's no longer the best player on his team. Will Chamberlain has a second chance at winning a finals. So we'll see if he can get it this year. Here we go. Into uh, the Simcast for game number one. The Knicks with an early lead. The Knicks with home court advantage in this series. It's a 19-point lead heading into the second half. Into the fourth quarter, they're up by 20. A minute 50, up by 18. And that will do it. The New York Knicks win it 108 to 92. Here in game number one, Sam Jones with 22, 4, and 4. Paul Arizon with 18 and 6. Uh, Will Chamberlain with 19, 7, 3 assists, and 2 steals. Costello with 19 as well. Into a game number two, the Knicks with the 1-0 series lead. And it's a back and forth game here. Into the second half, the Cincinnati Royals lead it, 54-49. Into the fourth quarter, they lead it by 15. And down to the wire here. 91 as 79 is the score and that will do it the cincinnati royals win at 93 to 85 they tie up this series at one uh henson with 21 and 4 embry with 17 and 7 built with 15 6 and 4 and we've got a tied series here headed to game three to cincinnati the knicks with an early lead in the first half 44 33 and now into the fourth quarter it's 68 to 60 can the Royals make this thing interesting? No, they will not. The New York Knicks take a 2-1 lead. 85-77 is the final score. Sam Jones with 28, 20-8 for Wilt Chamberlain. And on to a game at number four once again in Cincinnati. The Knicks once again with an early lead, but the Royals cutting that lead into the fourth quarter. It's 66-60. And five minutes goes 88-70. Goodness gracious, the New York Knicks are putting it on the Cincinnati Royals here in game number four, and that will do it. 101 to 86, the final score. 20 points for Casey Jones, along with seven assists and four steals. Paul Arizona with 19, 7, and 6. Neil Johnson with 18 and 5. Sam Jones with 12. Will had 22 and 10 was not enough as the New York Knicks take a 3 1 finals lead. But they did blow that 3 1 lead, and they had to go to a, a game seven against the Hawks in the eastern conference finals can they hold on to this 3-1 lead this time around and win it before game number seven here we go into game number five in new york if the rose can win this one they got a good shot into the fourth quarter it's 73 56 will chamberlain just cannot figure out how to uh how to win in the nba finals here three minutes goes 82 68 and uh this is that's oh i tried to stop it dang it uh it like skipped like 30 seconds all right well the new york knicks are nba champions for the third time in franchise history it's been a seven year drought for the knicks and they are once again on the mountaintop in the nba paul arizon look at that paul arizon wins his third finals mvp 15 points per game five rebounds four assists he has as many Finals MVPs as Bob Cousy. Paul Arison. Wow. I did not think Sam Jones must have had a terrible last couple of games. Uh, and Paul Arison must have had a, 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 you know, he was Mr. Consistency, right? With the Knicks. And uh, he's the veteran. He led them. Paul Arison is a final, three time finals MVP. And the Knicks are three time NBA champions here. And that will wrap up the 1961 and 1962 NBA season. And on to the 1962 NBA offseason. So we got some player retirements here. Jim Pollard, Max Zeslowski, Jim Nolan, uh, Frankie Bryan, Slater Martin, Dick McGuire, George Yardley. Um, let's see. I think that's it. Wow. A lot of players retired this season. On to the jersey retirements. George Yardley will get his jersey retired as well as Jim Pollard. So two jersey retirements i believe those are the first two we've ever had um is that right the jim Parley, pollard and yardley jim pollard played 22 years uh he played 
most of his career with the uh, Minneapolis Lakers and then ended his career with St. Louis. We'll look at his uh, award history, a five-time All-Star and a one-time third-team All-NBA. He gets his jersey retired. And then who else was it? George Yardley. Uh, he played 11 years. He won an NBA championship in, let's see, who was that with? 25. Uh, he won a NBA title with the Boston Celtics. Uh, and he won finals MVP that year. Forgot about that. George Yardley, who was a finals MVP winner. Uh, what else did George Yardley do? Um, let's see. He was a four-time All-Star, one-time first-team All-NBA. He was a two-time third-team All-NBA, one-time second-team All-Defensive, and a one-time first-team All-Rookie. He was not a Hall of Famer, though. So I don't think I'm going to put him in the Legends because I feel like in order to be a Legend, you got to make it to the Hall of Fame. So he did not make it to the Hall of Fame, so... Uh, you know what we could do? Instead of saying Legends, we could say Hall of Fame. That might be a good one. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Should we name the tab Legends or Hall of Fame? I feel like we should just do Hall of Fame. And then you can organize it however you want it, right? Um, so we'll probably do that. We'll, we'll rename it Hall, oops, Hall of Fame. Uh, and there you go. So we'll, we'll put those. But no Hall of Fame players this season. I'm waiting for George Mike to retire because I'm guessing he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Uh, but did he ever win a championship? I don't know if he ever won a championship. But anyways, uh, moving on to the 1962 NBA draft. And I believe there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight players in this draft. Okay. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do the coin flip for the first overall pick. It's between the Chicago Packers and the syracuse nationals so we'll give the packers heads we'll give the nationals tails and the first overall pick goes to tails the syracuse nationals will get the number one overall pick the chicago packers with the number two overall pick the pistons with the third overall pick um and then it will go philly la boston and then um hawks knicks and royals you gotta uh i guess the knicks will be the one team that won't get a pick just because they won the nba finals so uh we'll go ahead and kind of split it like that so on to the 1962 nba draft and with the number one overall pick the syracuse nationals will select john havlicek so john havlicek going to syracuse with the second overall pick, the Chicago Packers and now the Chicago Zephyrs will take Dave DeBouchier. The third overall pick, the Detroit Pistons select Terry DeShinger. Um, and with the fourth overall pick, the Philadelphia War Warriors select Jerry Lucas. The fifth overall pick, the LA Lakers take Chet Walker. With the sixth overall pick, the Boston Celtics take Zelma Albedi. The seventh overall pick, the St. Louis Hawks take Don Nelson. And with the eighth overall pick, the Cincinnati Royals take Leroy Ellis. So there you go. There is the 1962 NBA draft. Into the NBA free agency here in 1962. And uh, Elgin Baylor re-signs with the Boston Celtics. He was a restricted free agent. Uh, Bob Pettit will return to Detroit. Uh, where he, he signed with the no team, but he'll return to Detroit. Neil Johnston returns to the Knicks. Hal Greer uh, goes to uh, Cincinnati. Wayne Embry returns to Cincinnati. Clyde Lovelett will return to New York. Paul Arizon moves on to the Cincinnati Royals. So Paul Arizon, his time in New York is over. He finishes it with a uh, finals MVP. But obviously the Knicks have a lot of really good players. They decided to move on from Paul Arizon, who was aging. And uh, they, uh, they, 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 they think they can continue to win without him. So Paul Arizon on to Cincinnati. Uh, Bill Sharman, he uh, goes to LA. Gene Shu, the Nationals. Larry Faust returns to the Nationals. Gala will go to uh, Boston. Twyman uh, will go to uh, Philly. Uh, or actually now San Fran, right? Uh, Harry Donovan returns to the Lakers. So there you go. Uh, an interesting free agency, but uh, we now have the Zephyrs, which you guys can see 
uh here in a second uh, they don't have the like original original logo so this is what the zephyrs logo is gonna look like by the way they lost a lot of players um but yeah so dave de bushier and uh fresh is the only players right now in chicago but there is the logo i couldn't find like the original one where it's like diagonal and it's like goldish color um but i mean it's for one year and then there'll be the baltimore bullets so uh there you go and then we'll go ahead and change the philadelphia warriors to the san francisco warriors now here in the 1962-1963 nba season and at the all-star break the east wins again shocker 95 at 2 at 79 oscar with 18.0 rebounds one assist two steals bob Cousy with 16 4 and 6 elgin baylor with 14 8 and 5 sam jones with 12 2 and 5 and stokes with 10 and 6 for the West, Will at 19, 6, and 4, 4 blocks. Very West with 14 and 5. 10 apiece for Sharma, Mickelson, and Calhoun. So let me know in the comments below who do you guys have as the All Star MVP? The 1962 1963 NBA season is now over, and Elgin Baylor is voted by 2K as the regular season MVP. 26 points per game, 15 rebounds, and 7 assists. One steal. If you guys agree with 2K, that means he would win four straight. MVPs. Pretty impressive for Elgin Baylor. Dave DeBashir, rookie of the year, 27 and 27. Four assists, 1.4 steals, and 1.4 blocks. Obviously, he's on a really bad team, so I don't know. Uh, Tom Gullah, 12, 9, and 6. Bill Russell uh, wins a defensive player of the year for the seventh, seventh straight year. And we'll look at the other contenders here for MVP. Yeah, Elgin Baylor, obviously. Dave DeBashir. Uh, we'll look at the record and see if it's legit right uh jerry west with 26 and 9 sam jones with nearly 26 6 and 6 oscar 25 6 and 11 avlicek with 24 6 and 4 bob Cousy 23 10 and 10 another triple double year for bob Cousy. barnett with 23 8 and 6 mickelson with 28 and 6 and pettit with 20 15 and 6 so there you go uh let me know in the comments below who do you guys vote for for regular season mvp I think Dave DeBashir had led the league in scoring, by the way. He, he's going to be the scoring title leader or whatever, scoring title winner this year. But I mean, I, 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 he's probably on a really bad team. He's a rookie. I don't know. We'll see. Let me know in the or let me know in the comments below who you guys vote for for the MVP. All NBA first team, we got Bob Cousy, Oscar Robertson, Dave DeBashir, Elgin Baylor, and Bill Russell. All rookie second or uh, all NBA second team Jerry West, Dick Barnett, Bob Pettit. Uh, Petrovic is a big player. Okay, so we will replace him with John Havlicek. Yeah, Havlicek 24, 6, and 4. Bill Chamberlain. Uh, and then all NBA third team, we got Sam Jones, Bill Sharman, uh, Maurice Oaks, Jerry Lucas, and Willie Knowles. All defensive first team, we've got Jerry West, Bob Cousy, Dave DeBoshier, Bob Pettit, and Bill Russell. All defensive second team, we've got Oscar, Casey Jones, Elgin Baylor, Murray Stokes, and Wilt. Well, uh, and then all, what is going on? All rookie first team, Dave DeBoshier, Jerry Lucas, who averaged 15, 16, and 5. John Havlicek, who averaged 24, 6, and 4. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Chet Walker, who averaged 11 and 10 per game. The Shinger averaged 15, 2.9 rebounds per game. Don Nelson, 5 and 4. Uh, and then BD, 7 and 3. Leroy Ellis, 2.2 rebounds per game. On to the NBA playoffs. The Chicago Zephyrs miss the playoffs. And the Syracuse Nationals miss the playoffs. Uh, so we got the Royals as the one seed in the West. San Fran as the two seed. LA as the three seed. In the East, we got St. Louis as the one seed. Remember, they lost in seven in the East Conference Finals a year ago. Detroit as the five seed. They beat Syracuse, who was the four seed. Uh, and then the Knicks as the two seed. Austin as the three seed. Looking at the NBA standing, St. Louis went 74 and eight. New York went 73 and nine. Boston 72 and 10. Syracuse 67 and 15. Uh, Pistons went 61 and 21. Yeesh. And then the Zephyrs went 53 and 29. Yeah, they were really bad. Lakers 67, 15, Warriors 69, 13, and the Royals 72 and 10. So on to the conference finals. The Boston Celtics get eliminated by 
the New York Knicks, the defending NBA champions. Uh, the Detroit Pistons are eliminated to by the St. Louis Hawks. And the San Francisco Warriors are eliminated by the three-seeded LA Lakers. So, conference finals, we got the Royals versus the Lakers. Uh, I believe this is a rematch from a year ago. And then, or was it? No, it was the Warriors that were in the conference finals. Uh, and then it was the Hawks and Knicks, right? This was the this was the matchup last year. It was the Hawks and Knicks, obviously the Knicks winning in seven and then beating the Royals in what five, I believe, in the NBA finals. So uh let's go ahead and see what happens in the conference finals. This St. Louis Hawks team, though, they're getting better. Uh Oscar's up to 91, Barnett's up to an 86. Marie Stokes is up to an 88. Bill Russell is at a 96. So a very, very good team. The Knicks losing their finals MVP in Paul Arizon. They basically replace him with Earl Lloyd. Casey Jones, Sam Jones, Earl Lloyd, Ludo, uh, Rudy LaRusso, and Clyde Lovelet. So we'll see what happens here. Game number one. It goes to the Royals and the Hawks. Game number two, again, to the Royals and Hawks. Game three, again, to the Royals and Hawks. And the New York Knicks have been swept by the St. Louis Hawks and the Lakers. Win game four there. Win game five. Win game six. Good Lord. What are the Royals doing? Will the Royals be the first team ever to blow a 3-0 lead by the LA Lakers? Oh my goodness. The Lakers with an early lead. The Royals have taken the lead. 59-53 into the second half into the fourth quarter it's 88 87 back and forth in the fourth the lakers with a four point lead now a six point lead down to a four point lead can the royals make this a two point game they do a 52 seconds to go it's a four point game now and the, the lakers are just making free throws that will do it the cincinnati royals blow a 3-0 lead and become the first team in nba history to do so we haven't even had a team blow a 3-1 lead. The Cincinnati Royals just blew a 3-0 lead. Wow. The LA Lakers headed to the NBA Finals for the first time since, uh, what year is this? 1960, uh, where they won back-to-back -back in 59 and 60. So the LA Lakers back into the NBA Finals. Will Chamberlain has lost two straight finals and then blew a 3-0 lead in the conference finals. Yikes. That's um that's bad, man. That's uh that's tough. So, here's the NBA Finals. We've got the LA Lakers versus the St. Louis Hawks. We got Green, Charmin, Chet Walker, Vern Mickelson and Bob Hubriggs against the St. Louis Hawks, Oscar, Dick Barnett, Harry Gallatin, Marie Stokes, and Bill Russell. Okay. Bill Russell, a seven-time Defensive Player of the Year winner. Um, Oscar did not win Rookie of the Year his year. Uh, I believe that was... Who was that? Was that Wilt? No. That wasn't Wilt. Was that Jerry West? That was Jerry West who won it that year. So, yeah. Then you got Dick Barnett and Marie Stokes. Two solid players there. I, I mean, I feel like this is going to be a wipeout like this this should be a sweep for st louis here we go on to by the way st louis is the only team to not make it to the nba finals before this year so now every team other than chicago who just entered the league has made it to the nba finals that's pretty cool i feel like that's rare i don't think that happened the first time around or the second time around so the st louis hawks are down into the NBA Finals. Two teams remain to not win a finals appearance that's been in the league for more than five years. The Hawks and the Royals. The Royals have blown it three straight years. And the Hawks win it this year. Game number one, St. Louis with the better record, so they will have home court advantage. But the Lakers have had the lead all game long. The Hawks have come back, though, to take the lead into the fourth quarter. They lead it 88 to 81. Four minutes ago, they lead it 102 to 97. And now the Lakers have tied it up. The Lakers have taken a two-point lead, uh, and it's all tied up. 104-104, game one of the 1963 NBA Finals. Let's jump in. Again, I apologize. There's no game sound. I don't know what's going on. 
uh, today, but whatever. It's not working. So the Hawks with possession here, a minute and wait a minute. <laughs> okay, well, Charmin with possession. Uh. Uh. <laughs> uh. Where are they? 40 seconds to go and a big shot there. It's all tied up at 106. Uh. The players are invisible for the LA Lakers. I don't know if it's that, if it's their jerseys. Or if it's just a weird glitch. I don't know. Oscar with possession, though. He drives right, puts it up, gets it to Bill Russell. Bill Russell puts up a shot. That is no good. Rolls out Chet Walker with the rebound. Walker gets it out to Charmin. Charmin, a nice pass to Grabowski, who puts it in. It's a 108-106 lead for the LA Lakers. An invisible team dominating here in the final minute. <laughs> Like the coach is just talking to no one. All right. 108, 106, 27.5 seconds to go. Let's see if the St. Louis Hawks can tie up this game. Ball into Barnett. 24 seconds. Down to 20. Barnett's going to hold for the last shot here. I would suggest them getting the ball to Oscar, but I mean, Barnett's good too. So I guess it's not a bad option here. 12 seconds to go. 10 seconds to go. Barnett still holding on to it. Here we go. Gets the screen from Russell. Barnett to five, four, Oscar with the ball, pass into Russell, puts it in. It's a dunk by Bill Russell. 108, 108, 2.4 seconds to go. The invisible team calls a timeout. 2.4 seconds. Can the Lakers win it on a buzzer beater? The first invisible buzzer beater possible. Here we go. Walker will pass it in. Two seconds into green. Green. Puts it up and air balls. Okay, so that's the end of the re regulation. What a disaster of a game. Uh, on to overtime. <laughs> so the invisible team ended up blowing out the Hawks. Uh, I'm going to try and change their the logo jerseys and all that and see if that will change anything. Is they, uh, I, I don't want that to keep happening. So the Lakers take a 1-0 lead. We'll look at the box score real quick. Uh, Barnett 34-7-6. Oscar with 33-11-8 in a losing effort. Uh, Mickelson with 22-4-6. Grabowski with 19 and 9. Holbrook's with 16 and 8. I mean, they just have a deep team. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 players scored in double figures for the Lakers, where it was only four scored in double figures for the Hawks. All right, game two, I replaced the Lakers logo with another one, so we'll see if that fixes it. Uh, but game two in St. Louis, St. Louis down 1 0. They've lost home court advantage into the second half, though. They lead it by eight into the fourth quarter. It's 66-62, and the Lakers have taken the lead here midway through the fourth. Now a six-point lead. The Hawks have cut it to two. Now it's a six-point lead again for the Lakers. The Hawks are really struggling here in the first ever NBA Finals appearance, and that will do it. The LA Lakers beat the St. Louis Hawks 91-83 to and take a 2-0 series lead and are in complete control of this series. What happened to the Hawks? What is going on? The Lakers with an early lead here in game three, back and forth uh, early or late in the second half, but it's 55-51 Lakers into the fourth quarter. The Hawks have taken the lead, 85-76. Three minutes go is 92-84 and 133 to go is 96-94. Will the Lakers tie it up? They do. 109 to go, 96-96. Will the Hawks go down 3-0 in the finals? where they were a massive favorites. Let's jump in. All right, all players are visible. Here we go. <laughs> Here in Los Angeles, 96 and 96 is the score. A minute and four. And uh, Robertson gets doubled out to Russell, swings it. And Barnett will hand it back off to Oscar. They're doubling Oscar uh, when Oscar gets near the, the rim. Oscar drives and he slams it. Oscar Robertson gives the Hawks a two-point lead. 37 points from Oscar Robertson. He does not want to go down 3-0 in this series. 45 seconds to go. Lakers drive, and it's a foul. 
the rookie, Scott, uh, with the foul. Charmin to the free throw line. So Bill Charmin will have a chance to tie up this game as free throw number one is up and in. And free throw number two is good as well. So here we go. Gallatin in for the Hawks. He gives it off to uh, Oscar Robertson. 40 seconds to go. Robertson out to Gallatin. Uh, over a swing and pass to Oscar. To Barnett. Oscar now in the post. He gets doubled. Gives it to Barnett. Barnett spin. Puts it up. No good. And the Lakers. I believe that was Green who got that rebound. It kind of tipped between uh, Barnett and, and Green. And Green ended up grabbing the rebound. So 30 seconds to go here. It's 98-98, and the Lakers have a chance to take the lead here. We'll see if they uh, if they hold on to the ball here for a final shot. 27 seconds. I mean, they they got to... The shot clock, remember, shot clock said 30 seconds to manage scores. Uh, here's Charmin. Charmin puts it up and in. Charmin went quick. That shocked me. 17 seconds to go. Charmin gets the, a layup, and it's 100 to 98. The Lakers are 17 seconds away from taking a 3 0 lead here in the NBA Finals. As massive underdogs entering this Finals, all into Oscar. He gets doubled. Barnett with the ball here. Gets it to Murray Stokes. Stokes gets a, a screen. Stokes puts it up. No good. Kubrick's with the rebound, seven seconds to go, and the Lakers to the free throw line. Free throw number one is good. It's a three-point lead for the Lakers with seven seconds. That ought to do it, and free throw number two is good. The LA Lakers will take a 4-3-0 lead over the heavy favorite St. Louis Hawks, and that will, yeesh, what was that? That will do it. Shocking. Oscar. Stokes, Barnett, Bill Russell making it to their first finals appearance and they're down 3-0. On to a game number four. Now remember, the Lakers came back from 3-0 to beat the Royals. It's doable. It is very doable. If the Hawks can win this, they have a legit shot. They are the better team. We'll see what happens. Uh, into the second quarter, the Lakers lead at 26-24. Back and forth we go into the second half. The Hawks with a 46-40 lead. And into the fourth, it's 64-61. Down to 4-49. It's a three-point lead for the Hawks. Down to under two minutes. 73-68 lead for the Hawks. Now 73-71. The LA Lakers have taken a lead. 74-73, 24 seconds to go. Let's jump in. Will the LA Lakers win their third NBA title? The LA Lakers with possession, and the Hawks will have to foul. They need Charmin to miss a free throw here. They need Charmin to miss a free throw. And the first one is up and good. It's a two-point lead for the Lakers. They'll call a timeout here. Up, They lead the series 3-0 over the St. Louis Hawks. The veteran Laker team is now up by three. So St. Louis now will call a timeout. No more timeouts for either team. Interesting. All right. I, I'm shocked, man. I can't believe the Hawks. I mean, it's been all pretty much close games other than maybe game one. I can't believe the Hawks are on the verge of losing and being swept by this Laker team. Here we go. Gallatin will pass it in over to Oscar. Oscar down to uh, Scott. And he misses an easy, funny layup. That will do it. Grabowski gets fouled. And free throw number one is no good. Okay. And free throw number two is good. So it's a four-point lead for the LA Lakers. Oscar's got to go. 12 seconds over to Gallatin. Gallatin to Stokes. Stokes back out to Oscar. A long two. That's no good, and that will do it. The L.A. Lakers will win their third NBA Finals. Hubrick's in it uh, with the ball into Charmin, and Charmin gets fouled. What a disaster for this Hawks team. I really thought they were going to win this series, and they get swept. 
I mean, goodness gracious. Uh, wow. Carmen hits both free throws. Robertson, one final shot. No good. And the LA Lakers are the 1963 NBA champions. Their third finals win in, what is that, five years? Yeah, third finals win in five years. They won it in 59 and 60. Vern Mickelson uh, with the finals MVP and Paul Seymour with a finals MVP. They In three finals wins, by the way, for this LA team. Well, actually, this is the first championship in LA. They won their first two in Minneapolis, but as Mickelson is celebrating, uh, they have, they've gone 12 and one in their finals runs combined. 12 and one in the NBA finals for the Lakers in their wins. Uh, they did lose two, three. They've lost three. So now they're three and three in the NBA finals. They lost to the Pistons. They lost to the Celtics and the Nationals. But the LA Lakers, for the first time in LA, are NBA champions. I'm curious to see who wins finals MVP. The first one went to Vern. The second one went to Paul Seymour. So it'll be interesting, interesting to see who wins finals MVP this year as the LA Lakers hold up the Larry O'Brien trophy. And the finals MVP will go to, is that Charmin? There's your finals MVP winner. We'll see who it is. Yep, Bill Sharman is your finals MVP. 22 points per game, four rebounds, five assists, and a steal. Uh, he was awesome. He was awesome. This LA team, a veteran LA team, Bill Sharman at 36, Trubasky at 33, Mickelson at 35, Walker, who's the young gun, who's the rookie, Hubriggs at 31, Mackley at 34, Donovan 36, 28 for Green. I mean, most of the players... Here, average, you know, getting at least 19 minutes in in game four are over the age of 30. The only player who, who wasn't was a rookie in Chet Walker. Wow, a veteran team. They beat a young uh, St. Louis team. Barnett, who's 26. Stokes, who's 29. 24. Oscar. Bill Russell's 27. They just couldn't get it done. They just weren't good enough. Oscar. Just 14 points on 6 of 16 shooting in game 4. And that will do it. The LA Lakers are the 1963 NBA champions. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm going to try and figure out the sound. I have no idea what's going on. It's very frustrating. Hope you guys enjoyed though. Hit that like button if you did. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. And I will see you guys in 1963.